Okay, so this is going to begin part two of the notes, and I'll talk about a couple of the classes of mollusks that um, that come up um, more commonly. Most mollusks are classified into three of eight classes. Uh, we'll touch upon four of them, the gastropods, polysipods, cephalopods, and scaphopoda. Now, remember, you should have your outline sheet in front of you, as well as diagrams, because you will need to diagram some of these organisms. So first is the class scaphopoda. These are the cuttlefish. Uh, they their name cuttlefish means tooth shell and um, they can be used as calcium cuttlebone for birds so if you have a little parakeet and you give them cuttlebone this is the organism that it comes from they have a small shell found on the inside of their body the shell is open on both ends as you can see in the picture here uh, they like to burrow in the mud they do not have gills they just use their mantle for gas exchange through diffusion and they feed on detritus and protozoa and those would be just like the detritus is just like dead stuff that collects at the bottom here's just a general diagram of what they look like on the inside um, you can see that they have tentacles and a partial foot um, all combined as as their that body structure called the foot. Um, you can see they have a digestive tract, they have their ventral nerve cord, there's the cuddle bone. If you've never seen one, now you may know what we're talking about. So the next class is the polyplacophora, um, also known as chitons. So you should be moving to the second box down on your outline form to be filling in characteristics of this class. So they usually have uh, an elliptical body with a dorsal surface bearing eight overlapping limey plates, or they sometimes call them valves. Um, they live in marine environments, usually shallow waters. They're very slow moving, um, and they feed on micro Phages. They're called microphages feeders. So they just basically eat very microscopic little things like algae, uh, very small invertebrates, and they use their radula to scrape this. And it's reinforced with iron, so it is a very tough um, little organ that they have. General uh, body structure, if you were to flip them over, this is um, what you would see. And here's just a side view. Um, you can see complete digestive tract. Um, they have something called a digestive gland that secretes some enzymes for them. And then we move on to class gastropoda. This includes snails, slugs, conches, limpets, abalones, uh, sea butterflies, sea hares, and nudibranches. So in general, the gastropods are the most diverse group. Their name literally translates to stomach foot. Uh, they have a broad muscular foot attached to their stomach, which that's how they get their name. They do have cephalization, so they do have a head end. They have open circulation, and the aquatic um, gastropods will have indirect development with trochophore larvae. So, um, what you're doing right now on your note sheet is just outlining the general topics before you get into specific organisms. So you could write down the word diverse, um, gastropod equals stomach foot, they have cephalization, open circulation, and indirect development. Those would be the, the very brief things that I would write on the outline sheet. They are slow moving. Uh, they crawl, they secrete a special mucus to slide on, and they are typically veggie grazers with their radulas. They use their radula to scrape ve veggie, vegetation. Um, they are considered univalves, uni meaning one, and valve relating to their shell. So they have a single shell for protection that they can retreat inside of. Uh, their shell is usually spiral. They have a distinct head and they have their scraping radula. They may also have a rigid part of their foot called an operculum that they can close like a door and it seals them inside. Uh, snails 
I, I have this. Um, if you were to pick one up, a lot of times if you were to touch where they their shell is open, you can it feels kind of hard, and that's their operculum that keeps them moist inside their shell. Their visceral mass is typically turned 180 degrees clockwise. It's called torsion within their shell, and that's how it gets coiled up inside their shell. And this is the list of organisms that you can see this occurring in. Here's that diagram showing you how their intestinal tract is uh, twisted around inside of them. So the um, that final picture, letter C, that's generally what their structure looks like after it's turned 180 degrees. Okay, snails. Now we're going into specifics. Uh, you'll just want to write down these few things for snails. They are terrestrial. Their mantle cavity functions as a lung, so they use diffusion across their mantle cavity. They are generally intermediate hosts uh, where the parasites that go within them will reproduce asexually inside of the snails. Here's a general diagram. Um, you should label along with uh, me as we go through these. Another generalized internal structure. This one is the one that goes along on your note packet. So you should probably pause and label the items that are missing from your diagram. Here's some examples of different gastropods, a garden snail and whelk. The bottom one there is the whelk. So here we have the nudibranch, the kind of interesting looking creatures. They do not have a shell and they have dorsal projections um, that they can use as their gills. And then they do have nematocysts where they can discharge uh, their toxins into their prey. Nudibranches do have special chemicals in their body that leave a bad taste in the predator's mouth or they're poisonous. Nudibranches can also be brightly colored and that serves as an indicator that they're dangerous and not good to eat. All right, here's a little guy called an abalone. Uh, they have several holes in the top of their shell where they can excrete their waste. And uh, people eat these. I don't know if you've ever tried abalones or abalone, um, but that's, that's what they look like when they're alive. All right, moving on to slugs. They are one of the gastropods that do not have a shell. For defense, they come out at night when most of their predators are not around. They are considered garden pests. Um, their radula is like any other gastropod. And they do not have a large or well-developed head like the cephalopods. So um, they just kind of slither around and eat vegetables in our gardens. Okay, so this is a limpet, and they are in the classification of gastropods they, because they only have one shell. And if you look at the uh, drawing of them, on the right-hand side there, you can see their tiny little head. So they, they just have a differently shaped shell, but they, they do only have one shell. Um, 
They are generally herbivores. They cling to rocks and other surfaces. They do have their large muscular foot, um, but they're just the shell is just very different looking than like a snail. Conches, uh, you may have just seen the shell. These are the ones that people blow into to make that loud uh, trumpeting noise, but um, they do have very large shells. They are marine, and many of them are predators, so they are hunters. Okay, this thing is called a sea hare. This one is one that's um, not alive anymore. They do have ink glands that they can use to confuse predators if they're under attack. Here's a better image of one that's alive. There's a side view. You can see his head is at the right hand side. A sea butterfly, uh, very interesting body shapes too. They are capable of swimming very fast, believe it or not, in order to escape predators. Um, so that actually takes us to the end of these classes. So the next video will talk about the bivalves. Um, so if you want to keep going right now, you can watch the next video or you can take a break.